Hey everyone, Rob Ryder, Sunday, August 26th, 2012. Do me a favor, if you know any attorneys or lawyers, please send this to them. I want to make sure that I've given them their Ezekiel moment. Because if they're doing a summons that's anything like the one we're about to see, and complaint, you just brought fraud in the court. And, uh, you've had your, you're going to have your chance to change your ways right now. So this is uh, Massachusetts. This is how they do it there. Now, this isn't that much different than any other state. This is a summons to show cause. Okay. You are hereby summoned and required to serve upon, uh, oh, whoever these guys are. They're about to have a bad day. Oh, yeah. See, they've already brought fraud on the court. They put this case in. Um, a copy of your answer to the complaint which is herewith served upon you within 20 days after service of this summons sorry I just can't make this thing fit right the next size down is too small okay within 20 days of service of the summons um, exclusively of the day of service exclusive of the day of service you are also required to file your answer to the complaint in the office of the clerk of this court either before service upon the plaintiff's attorney or within five days thereafter if you fail to meet the above requirements judgment by default may be rendered against you for the relief demanded in the complaint you need not appear personally in court to answer the complaint excellent so you don't need to wait to court to give them an answer and it's pretty simple what you need to do you need to let the um, the fraudsters know and let the court know that they want an answer so what's happened right now is somebody's brought a case to a court said hey whatever guy owes me money okay well then the correct thing to do is to hear your side of the story so really that's why you're summoned hey somebody brought a claim what do you say we as people need to quit running away from this paperwork and just answer them and they're really easy answers unless otherwise provided by rule 13a your answer must state as a counterclaim any claim which you have against the plaintiff which arises out of the transaction or occurrence that is the subject matter of the plaintiff's claim or you will be barred from making such claim in any other action okay so yeah we're gonna put a claim in absolutely we're gonna claim fraud because as you can see witness Mary Rogan Sullivan presiding justice on some date should have put her seal I don't see any seal there do you the clerk did but the clerk's not the judge the presiding justice J-U-S-T-I-C-E you're gonna love that word justice is the one who has to put their damn seal and it's not on here so a justice has never seen this document and according to those rules Massachusetts Civil Procedure Rule 4 which this follows it says bear the test day of the first justice of the court to which shall be returnable who is not a party well they didn't follow procedures apparently because I don't see it now this is no different than if you were to go down and try to do a small claims action uh, which I tried right you go fill out a complaint and you take it down and you know you have to get a seal from the judge on your complaint before they'll issue a summons to have the other side come in well that you know the judge didn't see this guys right so here's your answer by what authority are you bringing me to court you didn't take this before a judge and then uh, return a service on some date I served a copy of the within summons together with a copy of the complaint in this action upon the within named defendant in the following manner 
in the following manner. It says, see this rule, right? But it doesn't say what manner it used. Right? That's an omission. And when they do it, they're supposed to put it here. Right? This is where you fill it out. What what the hell is this thing over here? A true this is a true copy attested by a deputy sheriff, right? That it hasn't been fucking served and no judge has seen it yet. And they got a cheap ass ten cent frickin' stamp out of a Kroger's man, an L S stamp. That ain't a court stamp. That that means nothing. It's a rubber stamp. Yeah, I gotta bump this up one more size. So, attorneys, if you're doing this, man, you're committing fraud, right? You're trying to bring in a living man into a case that a judge hasn't even seen yet. That's using color of law, something that looks like law but isn't, against a living man, and that's fraud. And if you mail this, that's mail fraud. Please place date you make service on defendant in the box on a copy serve the defendant. Well, there is no box. <laughs> Please place date you make service on defendant in the box on the copy served on the defendant. Well, this was served on the defendant. And put it on the original, return to the court, and on a copy, return to the person requesting service or his attorney. Excellent. Where's the box that you put the date in? This form ain't got no boxes on it. It ain't got no boxes. That's another defect in due process. Look at they have to follow the rules, people, right? Quit arguing the facts and point out the defects. It's really that simple. That's what I love. <laughs> This form prescribed by the Chief Justice of the District Courts. Yeah, you guys can go ahead. You attorneys can play your games all you want until the people find out. And then what you've done is you've self-confessed to fraud because these are the documents and we can always bring it up later. It's a beautiful thing. What else do these people send them? Oh, Uniform Council cert Certificate of Civil for Civil Causes or Cases. Oh, let's see what we got here. Now, whoever this is says that, that I am the attorney of record for Discover Bank, plaintiff in the above entitled matter. Oh, is that so? Well, my answer. I'm going to demand a, a writ a quo warranto to have you bring in the record to show me that you are the attorney of record for Discovery Bank. If you're not attorney, that's called false representation. You guys are looking at some serious jail time. All I need to do is point it out to a judge. He'll take care of the rest. All right, so that's what this is, right? Boom. They're saying they're the guys. They're saying that they are the attorney of record for Discover Bank. I'm going to make him prove it, because he certifies that he is. Now I don't see any um, notary seals. So can you certify without going before a notary or a magistrate? I don't know. Another question I'd ask. Is it possible to certify a document without going for a notary? So these are the answers you want, right? You can you can ask for anything you want that has to do with this case. So quit looking for the note. Now what's this here? What do we got here? Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, this must be the complaint. But isn't this interesting? It's a complaint. It doesn't have any docket number on it. Now, why would there be a place for a docket number on a complaint unless it was supposed to be on there? 
This is like that uh, um, special proceeding I did for New York, right? Where you're supposed to go get an index number first, right? That, I think that's what should be here, the index number. If it had gone before a justice, it would have a docket number. That's what justices do. They put shit in docket books. And this one ain't been before a justice, therefore there is no docket number. And this is the complaint. Let's see if they self-confess on here. Uh, plaintiff is a foreign state bank. All right. Well, you can only be sued in your domicile if you really want to be. So if they're a foreign bank, ask them if they have a license to do business in the district. If they don't, they can't do business with you. You don't have to do business with them. You just tell them, <laughs> I want to see your license, right? Show me uh, by what authority. It's the way it works in the territory, man. You, you have to have a license to do business in the city, period. Okay, so the plaintiff is asking for uh, 11,000. Oh, so it'll be triple damages, triple score. At least an attorney's going to jail for 30 days, losing his bar card, and being returned to the fleet. That's what uh, Lord Coke says will happen. Julie B. Solomon and Jeffrey S. Corman. You're going to have an interesting week coming up. Yeah, it'd take about a few days to get this done, but he's got 20 days to answer, and he wants to nail it, so he's going to think about it. But he's going to think about pointing out the defects and not arguing with the frickin' facts. Uh, possible judicial conflict of interest. Supreme pursuant to provisions. This is interesting. This is uh, regarding the ownership of the plaintiff. A parent company of the plaintiff doesn't have one. Public health corporations owning 10% or more of the plaintiff's stock. Huh. So, I'm wondering if this is just a private company completely. Because nobody owns more than 10%, which, you know, you would think, okay, there could be a lot of companies involved with the bank, but maybe there's really none of them involved with the bank at the quasi du jour level. It's a private company. Just like all the courts are private companies. You know, the frickin' bank, I'm sure, is a private company. Alright. Phone rings. Now this is uh, another form that came with it, and this has to do with the uh, statement of damages. It says it has to be with every, you know, uh, every civil action must be filed with a complaint or other pleading and all district court civil actions, all uppercase seeking money damages. Yeah, you know you're in an inferior court. You're looking for money. We never look for money. We look for the damages, we look for property, we claim the superior rights, title, and interest to our all capital letter name, which is our landed estate. It's your frickin' property, and all those accounts are yours. So you can see in here, now look at in here, uh, there's nothing up here at the top. This had to do with hospital claims, tort claims, it says. If you can't read it up there in the black, tort claims, and there are none. But every so often, subtotal for one through five above is gray. Total torque claims for lines B through G is gray. And then we got contract claims. Provide a detailed description of claims pursuant to an installment credit agreement. I don't think that's detailed enough. There is now due and owing as of something. But they don't say what's due and owing. How much is due and owing? For this form, disregard double treble damages claims. Okay, damage only. Okay, so this is the part they filled out. Not very detailed. I mean, no de detail at all. Provide detailed description of claims. Plaintiff, 
pursuant to an installment credit agreement, period. There is now due and owing as of 6 or 9.30.09. Why? See, there's nothing owing. They're, all these are blank. They put this down here at the total, and on these other ones, it was the total of the lines above. Well, that's what that is. There's nothing in these three lines up here. There's just a number down here. So another thing you want to know is what's due and owing. There's now due and owing. Right, so th there's just so many little things that you can pick out to get answers for that are going to bury these people. The, the, the biggest one is the, you know, it's the freaking summons. You don't need the rest of those. The summons will do it all on its own. Because it ain't been before a judge. It's not been served. This must be filled out. They can't leave this shit blank. If it's blank, it hasn't been done. And all this from the deputy sheriff is to attest this is a true copy. Yeah, this is what we're bringing you to court with, brother. Here's the truth. No judge, no service. Right? There's nothing to argue about the facts. It's never made it to court, so point it out. So this has, uh, you know, this, this is out of the civil procedures uh, for Massachusetts, and this is rule four out of the civil procedures. And then it will have a rule for how to answer in a counterclaim. And that talked about it here, 13A. So that's what Bob's looking at next. How do you properly answer as a counterclaim? And what are the points to bring up? And, and Bob knows you just bring up the law. Bring up the defects. They've self-confessed. Just shut your mouth and point out the defects. And let the judge do what the judge should do and slam them. So, all right, well, that's, you know, that's about it. I had one other thing I want to show you. I found this today. Um, for those of you that know or don't, you know, I, I'm trying to register as an elector down at my township. And so I had taken down there a, uh, um, an, af an affirmation to register as an elector. And I asked for an inquest of office and to have all my property recorded in the office of the recorder in the township so that it could be lawfully taxed, but I would have access to it. And to get me my um, uh, national passport, sovereign passport, whatever it is. Now, in Michigan, it says if... Um, if you if your body corporate is an inhabitant of the township that you can appoint the officers as your agents it says it quite clearly disturbingly it also says that to be an elect to be an officer of the township you need to be a registered elector and these registered electors are all kept in a thing called a master file well I don't think it exists. And so a couple nights ago, I guess it was Friday night, um, earlier this week, I, so I, earlier it was Wednesday, I took this paperwork down to the uh, township. And uh, Friday about f oh, 5 o'clock or so, phone, you know, phone rings and it's Oakfield Township. Ah, Start talking. And uh, Greg's the guy's name. He says, is this Robert? I said, yeah, this is Robert. He said, uh, Robert, this is, uh, I think Greg Dean is his name, but, you know, for whatever his name is. Uh, supervisor of the township, and what is your game? I kind of got the same thing I got last time, right? He started out, boy, he was huffy. <laughs> so, oh, okay, well, I guess he doesn't like what I gave him. I said, I don't know, man, what, what's the problem? Um, 
I don't know what you're trying to do. I said, well, I'm, it's quite clear what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to become a registered elector. I've appointed you my agents. I want an inquest of office. You can't appoint me your agent. I say, sure, I can. The law says I can. Right? I, it's on the paper. Look, it's, it's right out of the Michigan compiled laws. Oh, the law, the law. And, you know. So this is kind of a paraphrasing of a five or ten minute conversation, maybe. Um, but he eventually hung up the phone, and he hung up the phone when I got to the point of, well, according to the law, it says unless you're a registered elector, you can't hold an office. So if you're not a registered elector, you're not anybody. And uh, he said, I was, uh, I was elected by the... I said, no, you didn't read the law, man. You, you may have been elected, but you have a disability. So anyways, that didn't go so well. I said, okay, well, i got to put a complaint in. So I'm going to put in a complaint of disability. And this is going to a federal court. Because in the territory, they're all federal courts. And I'm in the territory of the township of Oakfield in the unincorporated federal district. So I have a complaint about a federal court. And you can use this for U.S. District courts, small d district courts. And that's what they are. Anything that is lowercase is in the territory. Right? If it's lowercase, it's in the territory. So we know this in Michigan because we were looking for the district court. When you read the Michigan compiled laws, there's good things about a district court. And it's all lowercase. And now go try to find it. Because every time you walk in the door, it's a uppercase district court. And while they took a couple of complaints to start, they stopped. And we kind of knew that, you know, this w I knew in my heart myself that this wasn't the right court because it's uppercase and I'm looking for the lowercase. So, long story short, they're a district court. And so you fill this out. It's a little two-page complaint form. Uh www.uscourts.gov Complaint of Judicial Misconduct or Disability. If you Google that, it's going to take you to this. You'll go to the site, and, and there's a couple of uh, instruction books that go along. But here's the kicker, man, and, and, and I just love this, man. Um, well, this is just how easy the form is first, right? Nothing really to it. Hey, have you ever sued the judge before? You're going to file? No, I'm not filing any lawsuits. No, I'm not interested in any of that stuff. All I need to do is give number five, brief statement of facts. And then a declaration and signature that I declare under penalty of perjury that the statements made in the complaint are true and correct to the best of my knowledge. Yes, I will declare under penalty of perjury. You're absolutely right, I will. I'm going to give you the facts. The facts are called the Michigan Compile Laws that say I can do what I'm doing and they won't allow me to. And technically they have a deficiency. They have a disability, man. They're, they're not registered electors. So they can't hold office. That's the way they wrote the law. Whether they realize it or not, um, they're going to get a they're going to get a witness pretty soon so when you fill this out you end, you end up sending this to um, whatever s federal circuit that you are part of whatever their district is like here in Michigan Ohio Indiana I think it's the sixth circuit court that's who you're sending this to and all complaints go to the presiding judge of the court the circuit court who happens to be one of the justices on the Supreme Court because each justice sits in a circuit court and they get together to make the Supreme Court. But they're the presiding judge or, you know, I think that's what they call them. You know, they're the big dog, whatever they're called, in the federal circuit court. Mine happens to be the sixth. So Judicial Council of the Sixth Circuit. So this complaint is going to go to um, 
a Supreme Court judge's top man at the circuit who's going to then forward it to the chief judge who is one of the Supreme Court justices who's going to send you an answer that's a wonderful day man I'm going to get an answer from a Supreme Court justice to why I can't have an office found why as an elector I can't register as an elector so I can right now I'm registered as a child we're all registered as a child as a child you can't own land in common law and this is all English law man that's all it is it's freaking English law you can't own land you have to have a guardian right you're lost across the sea Sesta KV whatever um, path you want to take because there's all these different paths and, and this is the thing about the system all the gears always match even though you have all these different forms of law they always match at the places they need to match whoever put it together put a lot of time into it but that's the side of fiction the side of man is very simple right this is a very simple complaint form and I couldn't get it into a district court I'm gonna get it into a Supreme Court justice because in the territory they're all federal article 4 courts and every township has a justice he may be the lowest rank in justice but it doesn't matter he still needs to put his seal on it put it in his docket book and send it up the line it's set up like the military man if you give it to a private it's too big for him he's got to take it up that's what you're supposed to do my problem is he's refusing to put his seal on it so you know I just want somebody to go talk to him <laughs> remind me took an oath man this is your Ezekiel moment what you gonna do the fact of the matter is there's a shadow government in every township they're all in municipalities I mean they're in all levels right and they're all appointed people it's the appointed people that have the power and they need to be registered electors and there has to be a master file and so I've asked for it on a uh, Freedom of Information Act it's one of the things that I'm going to point out to the court right that based on the answers so I may not send this for a few days because they have how many days you got seven days so you know sometime this week I'm gonna get it I may send it later anyways um, attorneys brother I, I I got a lot of videos you need to go watch right I, I'm gonna try to save your soul man if you're not of the devil right then come back to God you can just turn around today say you're sorry come back right help us against them we got lots of complaints to put in so um, you might want to watch indictment shakedown uh, I did one on where uh, attorney self confess that was on a deed down in uh, uh, Georgia uh, watch Michigan acts of treason and there you'll see a Supreme Court case that says statutory liens are unconstitutional and what's a statutory lien a lien that's not been recorded delivered or noticed all those have to happen and we never get proper notice and we're not going to put up with it anymore we're not going to argue your facts boy we're going to pick point out the defects in due process and so if you don't like the answer a judge gave you here's a complaint right but you know stick to the due process that he violated and make sure that you know you did it right so powerful stuff people uh, have some great IRS stuff here in just a couple days gotta get it verified okay see y'all